YouTube, what is up, what is up? My name is Matt and I'm here to take you through my Excel tutorial on how to hide values. But first and foremost, I'm a YouTuber by me, for you the people. I wanna make what you wanna see next, but I can only do that if you comment below. If you like the, the videos I'm making, don't forget to shoot me a like. And if you wanna stay up to date with my content, don't forget to subscribe. As always, if you have a friend that you think would like my stuff, or you think that they would get value out of out of it, please share it with them as well. Let's get it going. So, hiding values in Excel is when you have your formula already made, already set up to pull data from somewhere else. And this formula is to pull the data so you can manipulate it and do whatever else with it you need. But you just have to organize it somewhere. And the formula, no matter what, if the data is there or not, or if you don't want it to be shown or not, it's always going to spit back a zero or it's always going to spit back an error. So my four ways that I use to hide the zero or error values is when the data that I'm pulling either doesn't exist yet. I haven't inputted it yet, or I don't want it to be there, uh, based off the date, which is going to be one of my examples. So, before I keep on rambling, let's get it going second time. Side note, you really have to understand how to use if functions, super basic, I'll explain. And second side note is that I'm gonna use my monotony and strain calculator from my previous video. If you're coming from that video, great. If you're not, you don't have to understand what it is, just I'll, I'll kind of talk through it and why or how you would apply each of my four methods uh, in each different situation. Okay, so here we have all of the functions that we will be using to help us hide values. So like I said, it's very important to understand if functions. But first, so here is kind of our somewhat end goal. So all of these formulas have, all these cells, sorry, have formulas in them, pulling data from somewhere else, and then it's calculating and then manipulating to spit out different different values. So this is kind of our first end goal, and then we're gonna learn how to hide values to make it look prettier. So if, so if there's a criteria, logic test criteria, comma, if it's true, so if it's true, do this, comma, if it's false, do that, and then end parenthesis, is blank. So how it works, so it checks whether a reference is blank and then if it's true, so if it is blank, it'll say true. And if it's not, it'll say false. So as we can see the criteria, if it's true or false, it'll do something. And then we have a formula to say literally true or false. Today spits back today's value. And then if error, So basically, if there is an error, you tell it to do something. So the value, so if there is an error in that value, comma, then do that. And another thing to understand is that double quotations means blank. So, or at least appear blank, sorry. So this formula equals blank blank or equals quote quote, and it's coming back as nothing blank. So we have our data right here and we have our formulas right here. And it's a lot easier in general when you're making an Excel sheet to kind of set up all of your formulas first and then look at kind of where your issues or your zeros or your error values come from and then kind of going from there. But if you set it up right, you can just do one week at a time and it'll work for every athlete and it'll work for every week. So I'm going to set this up. Let's do our total load. Let's do our average load. And let's do our monotony really quick. And let's do our string. Okay, so let's start out. So 
you have to know what your end goal is. And that'll help with everything. So I want to hide values when it's not today and when it's blank. And this is tying in a lot of ifs, so bear with me. So you start out with if logic test. If this value, so we're already looking for this value somewhere else, but cl click it again. So if this value is greater than today, comma. So if March 8th is greater than today, what to do if that's true, blank. What to do if it's false. So if it's less than or equal to today, like it is, then do this value. And because we added another function, we have to add another parenthesis. So now we're going to add another one. So if it is true, make it blank. So if it's greater than, so today is May 3rd. If it's greater than May 3rd, just make it blank no matter what. So now if it's less than or equal to May 3rd, today, if, then I'm going to copy all this stuff and it'll make sense in a second. So if is blank, so I'll just copy and paste it, everything. So if this is blank, so the value that it's currently looking for, and that's why you have to set everything up first. So literally all you have to do is just add how to hide. So if that is blank, and notice the syntax, I'm on the is blank. So if this value, close out the parenthesis, so that's the logic test. So if it is blank, it'll spit out true, but if it's not blank, it'll spit out false. So if it is blank, comma, going to our if true, make it blank. But if it's false, then do the actual formula. And then we add another function, so we have to close it out. And when everything is closed, the syntax will go away enter so before we copy and paste everything gotta do our references so we want the row for the date to stay the same but we want the columns to move sideways look at that so now because they didn't practice on monday the 8th on here monday they didn't practice this is going to be blank but there's still a formula so now we can do, uh, we could do the same thing with this one, actually, with the if today and blank, but we'll do something different. Just another if. So equals if this above it, this cell is blank. So if there's no RPE for that day, no data for that day, Make it blank, but if it's not, then show it. So now this is important to set everything up and kind of go in a systematic fashion because you have your formulas here and now you have an error. So now if error, like I said, what is the value, comma, what to do if there is an error, make it blank. But if there's no error, then it'll just do the value. So now this is all set up to where we can copy and paste it for everything. And copy and paste it for every day. And this is just to get those black lines out of the way. So look, we only have values for when there is actually a session. And because all of these days are less than or equal to today, that's why it's being shown. So now we have to take this and put it right here. So it's always going to sum this stuff. And this is why you have to know your end goal. We need zeros to calculate monotony and strain, which is a different conversation, but we need the zero here. So what we can do, because we want it to spit back a zero, is just leave it no matter what. but we can still do the date. So if this is greater than today, make it blank. But if it's not, make it false, close it out. And we have to do our references. So now in the future, it'll say zero, 
when it's less than or equal to today, but if it's greater than, then it won't. So now, because this is a weekly average, what we can do is we can say if this, so Sunday, so the end of the week, so if it's basically not Sunday yet, make it blank, but then if it's not, show it. And then we can do that for everything. And because these two bottom formulas, there you go. Oh, see? So it said false because I didn't have anything to do if it were true because it is true. So I got a little ahead of myself. So that's why you always have to follow the syntax. Logic test, value of true, value of false. Selfie mode. So I misspoke in the video and I want to clarify just because it's a teaching point for Excel. So the if function goes criteria comma if true comma if false. So the reason why it spit back false is because I had not typed in the double quotes yet. So my if false was shifted one up to the if true. So because my fun, my criteria was false because today was not greater than, or because the value I was looking for was not greater than today, so it was less than or equal to, I wanted to show it, it had nothing to do if false because the if false was shifted into the is true slot. So that's why you have to be very particular with your syntax and just follow along. And I know that uh, the fourth month is April. I just misspoke earlier and I didn't want to read you. Do our references. Okay. So with these two, you saw that this will spit back an error if there's nothing there. But we can also do, kind of like I said, base it off the cell above. So there's, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. It's a, just about what is most, most logical to you, what makes sense to you. So if that is blank, make this blank. If it's not, and as you can see, if you do is blank for one cell, because it's a little longer, then you can base everything else off that cell. So that's basically what I'm doing now. If, because these are going to hide based on the date, I can base it off of that. Okay, so now we have everything for the next week and we can copy and paste it. And due to our awesome making of formulas, copy and paste this for everyone else and it shows up. Now for the average, because everything is the same besides how the averages are calculated, remember how I said, how I said that, forgot what I said, but anyways, oh, you need your end goal, sorry. So our end goal is averaging these values, little Excel on the fly here, averaging these values. And then what we're going to do is just a simple if error, do that and then make it blank if there is an error. And if you know the, the average function, if you're averaging stuff that isn't there, it'll spit back an error. So that's where you kind of got to know Excel as well. But we can just drag this all the way across. But if we didn't have the if error, it'll spit back an error. So I'll just show you guys. So if we had this, it'll spit back that. So that's why we did error for this. So this is going off of date. And then this is going off of that. Good English right there. 
but you can see how you kind of have to go systematically, like I said, and then it'll all make sense. So you see how now when I put that there, okay, perfect. So now we can copy and paste this for the whole week. So this is if everything is in the past. Now if I change, so today is Friday. And this past Monday was 429. So if I make this 429 and I make the date of 429, so we have this Friday being today, it'll hide everything. But this is all set up so you can see all of the values, all the formulas. So until midnight, none of this will show up. So that's why you have to have multiple ways to hide multiple tools in your toolbox to get it to do what you want it to do. And why we're hiding this is because this is based off weekly averages. So we don't need these values until the week is done. So there you have it. If functions, what, how to use is blank, how to use today and how to use if error. And then basically using zeros because, as you can see, this will spit back a zero. It's another way to use is blank. So if the really long, so if the really long formula equals zero, because it'll spit back a zero, then make it blank. So it's just another way to do if blank. So there's Three methods I showed firsthand, a fourth way just using if to hide your values when you have your formulas but your data doesn't exist or you just don't want to show your data yet. So there you have it, my Excel tutorial on how to hide values. So as I alluded to a few times in the video, you have to have basically do it in a systematic fashion like I did. So I made all my formulas. I knew what was going to give me errors and I knew what was what I wanted to show depending on the date and if it was a certain date and if it was or wasn't blank. So there's four methods, three I showed you guys to where you can hide where you can have your formulas but it just makes everything look a lot prettier. So I know that was kind of quick, kind of ran through it all, but basically if functions pretty easy is blank today, double quotes is blank, and if error. So if you know how all those pieces work by themselves, you follow the syntax with all the commas and the parentheses, Excel will get very finicky. Uh, commas and parentheses, knowing where you are and what function, you have your end goal, you do it in a systematic fashion, you can make your Excel sheets look beautiful. And this will just come with time. I've been doing this for about a year now, and I made multiple Excel sheets in this fashion. And it can go very quickly, kind of like I just showed you, sorry about that. But your formulas, what you want to hide and why, what functions can help get you there. Happy Excelling. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe.